Hey there, and welcome back. Today I have an MG, MGB that has sat in a garage for way too long. Let's see if we can get it running again. This is a 1966 model. So this has the early steel dashboard before they went to plastic on everything. When I went to pull this out of the garage that had been stored in for so long, the cover for the battery was already off of it. I think someone had been messing with it, trying to get it started, but the smell coming off of this thing says it has not run in a while. The date code on this battery is 2021, so about three years ago this car was running. But if you don't drive it and you don't take care of it, this is what's going to happen. Let's take the multimeter, see if the battery has any power. Yeah, 12.2 volts, so that's a good sign. They may have gotten this cover off and successfully charged it, so that is good for us. You can see the mice have been on this thing. Soft top is raining down, mouse droppings. Let's turn the key and see if anything happens. Fuel pump's running. Pull the choke out. All right, the battery showed enough charge, but the battery may actually be dead. It's not cranking the engine over. So let's attach a jump pack and try this again. Okay, that's ready. I don't hear the fuel pump anymore, so the fuel bowls must be full. Still is not wanting to start. Let's set this to override. Okay, this battery might be completely shot. Let's try the big jump pack. This should start this even if the battery is completely no good. Okay, still nothing. So I wonder if the starter solenoid is bad. We can real quickly do a test on this battery. So we want to do a battery test. This is a regular flooded battery. We're gonna put in the cold cranking amps, which is 665. And we'll hit start. Okay, battery health, 77%. You're supposed to charge it first before you test it, so this is a good sign that we do have a problem under the hood. If we take a look under the hood, the starter solenoid is over here on the fender. So we have two small wires here that trigger the solenoid, which is just an electromechanical switch. And when the switch closes, it connects these two larger wires together, which drives the starter. So to test if this is bad, the easiest thing to do would be to take off one of these wires and touch it to the other wire, completing the circuit and seeing if the starter runs. If it does, then we know that the starter solenoid is no longer able to conduct enough current to run the starter, and we need to replace this. The starter is just beneath here, so I can see that this wire here runs to the starter, and that means this one is live. This has our battery voltage on it, so we wanna be careful that we don't touch anything here and touch it against the ground anywhere, or we might be welding our wrench to this. So I'll take this one right here off. I'll put the boot back on, just so I don't accidentally touch that while I'm undoing this other one. Now with that starter cable removed, we can touch it to the solenoid. So that's just welding itself to there. So there's definitely a problem, a short in the starter itself, and it will have to be taken out and rebuilt or replaced. The solenoid itself might also have gone bad because if the starter is shorted out, then the connections inside the solenoid may have welded or burnt up, and the solenoid itself may need to be replaced as well at this point. To get the starter out, you will have to come underneath your car one bolt, the lower bolt, also is holding on the ground strap here. You will have your positive battery cable there, 
and you'll have another bolt just like this that you have to take out on the top side. So I'll get this starter out and we'll get it replaced. I have the old starter out of the MGB and I'm going to upgrade it with this high torque starter. This one came from Moss Motors. This one fits early MGBs as well as MGAs. There are several ways to wire this new starter because this has a built-in solenoid on it. And this is the trigger for the solenoid right here. Whereas this old starter only has one connection for a cable right here, which would be the same as this one right here. I'm going to install the starter so that the rest of the car still stays stock looking. So all I need to do is run a wire from this connection here over to here. And of course my battery cable from the other starter solenoid will run down to this. So when power comes down to here, which supplies power to the starter, it will also trigger the solenoid here running the starter. This is the easiest setup. You could also run the wire that triggers your other solenoid down to this connection and then you would eliminate the solenoid that's already on the car and only use this one. But I'm going to keep this stock looking so I'll be using both solenoids. To do that I'll be using the wire that they included with this. All I need to do is put a ring terminal in here and attach it there. I have the wire looped around, now I can install the starter. This will be a lot easier because this one is not only smaller, but a lot lighter than the old one. I have the new starter installed, but the post on that starter is much larger than the original post, so I'm going to have to drill out this original starter cable so that I can hook it up. Fits nicely on there now, so I can put the nut on. Now let's touch our starter wire to the solenoid again and see if the starter runs. Okay, that fixed that. All the wires at the original solenoid are reconnected. Now let's try to start it again. The battery might have enough power to start it now, now that the starter is not shorted out. Let's give it a go. Still not starting. We did hear the fuel pump running. I'm pretty confident that this car should run, so I'm going to give the carbs a little shot of starter fluid. We'll see if that helps. Ran for a second, so it must not be getting any fuel. I'm going to take off one of these float bowls, see if we have fuel in here. See if the floats are maybe full of fuel. Okay, the fuel bowl is full of fuel. The float feels okay. I'm gonna turn the fuel pump on for a second, make sure that gas flows out of here. We're definitely pumping fuel. Like I said, this car should run. I'm going to try to start it again. Since the engine wants to run, we do have spark, so ignition is not the problem. Our problem is fuel. It's only running on the starter fluid and it's not running on the gasoline. It, the gas could be just too old, but I would think that it would run just a little bit even on really old bad gas. So I'm gonna get these air cleaners off and we'll take a closer look at these carbs. Let's make sure the pistons move up and down like they should. That looks good. That looks good. Let's check the choke mechanism and make sure that it's actually moving the jets down. Does not look like the choke is working. I think the jets are stuck in place. And that could be because the old fuel has gummed them up. So let's take the tops of these carbs off. That way we can take a look at the jets. Oh yeah, look at that gunky fuel down in there. I need to get this cleaned up. I'm gonna take some carb cleaner, see if I can get this cleaned up and see if I can get the jet freed up as well. Let's get the other one off and check it as well. Well, you don't see that very often. Look at the corrosion on that needle. It's actually turned it green. This one looks a little better than the other one did, but it also needs cleaned up. The jets are cleaned up now, so the choke does work. They do go down and return. 
I have the pistons all cleaned up. Let's put everything back together. Let's check that our pistons move up and down freely. Now we can try starting it again. There we go, it's running on gas now. Make sure everything looks okay. We don't have a bunch of smoke from the exhaust. I'm not seeing any fuel leaks. Let's see if the clutch works. Yep. Brakes seem to work. Let's take it out and take it for a drive. This car runs pretty good. There's a few problems. This is a little too loose. This is a good car to work with. Well, that's gonna be it for today. We got the car running. Let's assume that the starter is the reason that the car was put away for so long and the carburetor scummed up. Cars need to be driven. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do with this one. I have a bunch more upgrades in mind, so if you wanna see this car again, comment below and click subscribe. Mm -hmm.